I just received something beautiful and, and unique from you. So often we come to your house or even we just open up the word and we, we come uh, hungry, we come open-handed. Lord, open-minded to receive something from you, to learn another aspect of your beauty and your holiness and your wonder. So fill us with wonder this morning. Can we pray that together? Fill us with wonder. Fill us with wonder, God, because you are a wonderful God. You are wonderful. In Jesus' name, and everyone would say? Amen. 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 Well, you may be seated. Thank you, Will. Can you put your hands together for Will and Cadence? They're so faithful with their gifts. Love you guys. Well, like I said, we're going to jump right in. Um, we're going to talk about spiritual gifts as a whole, and then I know I gave you way too many notes. I know I don't do that on Sundays, but I feel like today is a unique day because it's a training for believers. And so, no, we are not going to go through 18 pages of notes. Uh, you, I know you guys are like, you said you'd be two hours. No, um, I'm only going to touch on some of that, but I wanted to do what I love when I go to a conference. I actually, I love when the speaker, and I know Mick's probably the same way, this just gives you a pile of notes because then you can study further if you want to. I did also put these on the sermon page of rockofgrace.org. So if you prefer the iPad version uh, or smart, smartphone version, you can go to rockofgrace.org, click resources, sermons, and they're right there. Uh, again, if you're a guest, restroom is right across the hall. Tomorrow night, the conference will begin at 6.30, and then uh, Monday night also at 6.30, okay? And if you have any questions, ask Ruth, because Lord knows she rem will remember something. I will forget, but you didn't hear that, Ruth. All right. Um, we're going to talk about, I have, I have two talks ready, and I was reviewing them last night, and some of this you've heard from me before, and I, I said to you, well, Lord, I will just have both ready to go and see which one the Holy Spirit wants. And so what I'm going to do, what I want to do is briefly um, mention to you in your book, in your little booklet, the seven spiritual gifts. I'm not going to give you that. Or I'm not going to um, teach that. I just want to give that to you. So how many of you guys got your notes? Raise your hand if you got them. Awesome. All right, so when you see seven motivational gifts, you'll see me say it. I'm not saying those are the only gifts. That's just some studies that I've heard from Wayne Grudem and others. When you look at some of these gifts, you can kind of compartmentalize them. And it just makes it easier for us to understand. I love what one teacher said about that passage. Um, I believe it was Chris Valton. He said, based on that math, there's 15% of, uh, of you have that certain gift. Like 15% in the room probably have the gift of serving. 15% in the room might have the gift of teaching. Um, and especially on a Sunday morning, uh, I just know God set up his kingdom and his family so that everyone could be encouraged and we need each other. Amen? So dive into that more at home, but I want you to flip to the page that says the purpose of prophecy. And I, I wasn't sure which one I was going to teach on, but I want to teach on that. So it's like five or six pages in, you'll see the purpose of prophecy. All right? So we're all called, when you think about being a believer, and again, this is a Saturday morning in the snow. So how many of you are already believers? Raise your hand. I, I would imagine 100%. That's what I thought. Okay. We're all called to bring God's kingdom to earth, right? Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. And we, we've done five-week series on what that might mean, right? But if you think about this, I, I was adding this to this notes last night. If you think about what Hebrew says about Jesus, he's the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. How many of you guys love that line? Isn't that amazing? Jesus is your brother. So, so amazing. So this was hitting me last night. I was like the firstborn among brothers and sisters. And he is operating as the son of God, but also as a man, which is unbelievable. Because remember what he promises us. He says, hey, when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. It's going to even be better that I go. Because you're going to even do more or even greater than what I did. So I'm still trying to wrestle with that. 20 years in, I'm still trying to understand what that means. But I want us to just think for a minute about this. When Isaac goes to get a bride for Jacob, he sends the spirit. I'm sorry, he sends a servant. And the servant is a type of the Spirit. So everybody say type. All right, so it's a type of the Spirit. In fact, 
the, the servant is unnamed. Isn't that interesting? So the servant goes and he prepares a bride. He finds Rebecca. He finds a bride. And why do you start with that, Jordan? Because I don't want you to think that we're here on a day like this so that we can just understand. It's not the, the spiritual gifts are given so you can have goosebumps. And it's not that spiritual gifts are given so that you can look spiritual. <laughs> spiritual gifts are given so that, so that the Holy Spirit through you can prepare a bride. Spiritual gifts are given so that the Holy Spirit through you can prepare a bride. Remember the woman at the well? What is Jesus doing? He's preparing a bride. He's speaking to her shame. He's speaking to her identity. He invites her into a relationship with God. He teaches her about worship, but he sees her for who she is. And in that, she goes, she tells the whole city, and they all get saved. So prophecy is powerful, right? So prophecy, what do I mean by prophecy? Wayne Grudem calls it this, speaking in human words. This is in bold print on your uh, notes there. Speaking in human words, what God miraculously, spontaneously brings to mind. Speaking in human words, what God miraculously, spontaneously brings to mind. So in past teachings, I've tried to describe it like this, prophecy it's, it's God's spirit giving you and me God's perspective on a situation so that faith is built up and obedience can follow. So that faith is built up and obedience can follow. Let me give you an example. This is a, a message I got last night, or not last night, three, three or four nights ago, sometime this last week. <laughs> sometime this last week, this guy messaged on, fa on Facebook, and he says, hey, do you remember prophesying to me um, 10 years ago, and I, I didn't w remember what I said, but, and um, he, he said, he, he wrote back, and he said, well, you prophesied about my musical gift, but that was going through a lot of difficult things. He said, well, I've been in prison the last 10 years, and your, your, your words have been echoing in my mind for 10 years, so I taught myself guitar, and now I'm a worship leader. Come on, so that's a prophecy God can use just your simple, so simple, it can be 30 seconds, and you speaking into someone's life what God sees about them. Because the world might say, well, you're a convict, well, you're a criminal, well, you're whatever, you're based, I'm going to identify you based on your behavior, but God doesn't identify you based on your behavior. He, he identifies you based on what his son sees in you, that you can be forgiven and restored, a child of God, and he sees you for your potential. Right? Amen? So the purpose of prophecy when you think about it, it falls under all the spiritual gifts. So that first notes that I mentioned, when you read that later, you'll see me saying that spiritual gifts are all meant to glorify God and build one another up. God's word is very clear about that. What are spiritual gifts for? They're so that you and I can better glorify God, right? If, if the trickers open their home to me and they show the hospitality gift <clears throat> and I come into their home, I feel loved and friendship. Not I'm just invited to a church service. Not I'm invited to agree with a monologue. You see the difference? But now I'm friend to friend, like what Jesus did with people, meal, over a meal. And then they simply read a scripture to me. Or, or they just pray with me. How many guys are in a group or a life group of some sort and you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, exactly. What do I feel? Now, I'm, I am built up in my faith. I love God more. I'm more apt to love and trust my father because of their simple act of hospitality. You see that? It's the, same with, it's the same with prophecy. All the spiritual gifts are meant to do those two things, glorify God and encourage people. And we're going to talk about that gift, that word courage a lot. We say courage. Okay? So Jesus is so beautiful, so amazing, so powerful, radiant, so perfect in all his ways when we are prompted by his spirit to encourage someone, right, it can, be one, it can be one sentence of discernment. It can be one sentence. It can be a picture, right? We're going to talk about how, how this could look. I, I remember I was, at, I was at Bob Evans one time, one of my favorite moments with the Lord. And i got to be honest with you, I, I know I've shared this story with a couple of you before. My kids were misbehaving. I would love to say that pastors have perfect children, but turns out we're also human. Uh, my kids are also very human. Love you, kids. Love you, girls. So they were being like real rowdy and real loud, right? And so let's just say I wasn't in the zone. 
How you guys ever just been not in the zone? Like you're in the zone, but you're in the zone to squeeze their knee. You're in that zone. I was in that zone. But the bus boy walked up, and as he walked up, I saw his life flash before my eyes, right? Like I saw, I saw drug addiction, and then I saw this graph of his life going down, and then his life going up, and he was about to go back down. Almost like, you ever seen like an income chart that goes up or down or something? It was like that. It was on its way up. And I was like, Lord, I'm not even a nice person right now. <laughs> Seriously. But Holy Spirit's like, why don't you just, why don't you just encourage? Why don't you just be obedient, right? So I said, hey, can I share something with you? Yeah. I was like, you know what? I know your life was taking a downturn, but you're on the way up. And I know you're tempted to give up, but you, the trajectory of your life is now right. And you just need to stick with it. He starts crying. He goes, I've been in a teen challenge for months, and I'm ready to give up. He's like, I want to quit. I want to leave. It's so hard. I'm like, don't give up. Don't quit. Right? Now, for years, he'll go, there was this short blonde guy. Right? He had all these wild kids. And he just told me, don't give up. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying, like, it can be so Simple, but what does it do? It prompts him to trust God, to continue in his faith. And, and then what does that do? That glorifies God. So again, God the Son, Jesus, he obeys the Father in accomplishing redemption, but he sends the Spirit to continually apply this work. And through you, through Will, through Tammy, through Dennis, through our Dean, He's glorifying the Father. He's building his kingdom. He's, he's continuing his work. And by the way, isn't that amazing? I was telling our life group this last Saturday. It's, it's so humbly, it's so humbling that Jesus says you feed them. Right? Jesus says you feed them. Do you know he doesn't have to include us? Think about that. He doesn't have to include us. He could have came and just healed all the sickness and Renewed every mind like that, right? He could have provided every, everybody, everybody's bank accounts just goes up to what you need. But he doesn't do that. He says, hey, why don't you give them $100? What? You see what I mean? Hey, they're, they're not feeling well. Why don't you pray for their healing? He wants to work through you and through me. That is humbling, and that's beautiful, isn't it? So a couple important truths to set this foundation. Christ's work on the cross is complete. You're on page two of that second half of that. Christ's work, okay? Christ's work is complete. Everybody say this with me. Christ's work is complete. Now, you might say, Jordan, why do you, why do you say that? That's, that's the gospel. That's a different topic. No, the gospel is the center of every topic. So because Christ's work is complete, hear me out, you're not um, impressing God by flowing in a spiritual gift. Now, by the way, even Paul, the Apostle Paul was tempted in that. Towards the end of his writing, he said, I no longer am driven to impress God. <laughs> that means that there was a time in his life when he thought he could impress God. Like, hey, God, did you see that? That was pretty amazing. Anybody else ever done that? Everybody else had a, like, a great day, and you're like, God, <laughs> I am on today. I prayed with that guy. I gave my waitress an extra tip. You must be proud. No. He's pleased. He is proud. But we're not, you're, not, you're not like impressing God if you flow in the prophetic. You hear me? Why? Because Christ's work is complete. If his work wasn't complete, you and I would be in a mess right now. Okay? All right. So number two, there are two realities, two realms that we exist, the natural and the supernatural. I wanted to I added this to my notes because I wanted you to understand it's not that, like 2 Corinthians says, we do not look at things that are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary. Everybody say temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. We are spiritual beings, in other words. Spiritual beings having an earthly experience. I mean, think about it. How else has anybody in here ever had somebody give them a word of discernment for your life? Given you a word of knowledge, right? And encouraged you. It said, God knows me. God loves me. How else could that happen unless God's spirit told their spirit? Right? You've heard me make this joke often. Like, 
I mean, maybe one day he'll send an email, but I doubt God sent them an email, right? I'm glad, I, I don't think God uh, orchestrated it so that that person followed you around for a month and just happens to know everything about it. No, it was God's spirit in a moment told their spirit, they were obedient, and you were encouraged. That means you are a spiritual being. I'm a spiritual being, okay, having an earthly experience. So this is an important premise for us to understand, for us to really start flowing. So I want everybody to turn to, to, turn to a neighbor, turn to somebody around you, say, you are a spiritual being having an earthly experience. All right, just wave your arm out and say, even if you lose your arm, you're still a spiritual being. Okay, so God wants to talk to you right here. The reason I say that, again, is this is very, very, it's a premise that you need to understand when it comes to flowing in the spirit. Because your logic, your mind might disagree. Your mind might say, uh, no. You see? Holy Spirit might say, hey, I want you to give that person $500. And your mind might say, oh, Lord, they're, they're loaded. They don't need it. And then what do you have to do? Reject that, that and say, oh, but the Spirit told me this. You see what I'm saying? And so I'm not saying you reject all thinking and intellectual doesn't go out the door. In fact, God calls us the deep, the more we're following the Lord. Um, you think about what he made of fishermen and tax collectors. He made them philosophers. He made them think about the things of life, right? The biggest things of life. That's fascinating to me. So I'm not saying you throw out your intellect. But I am saying that sometimes you have to surrender what your logic says to obey what the Spirit says. Okay, number three, God is always wanting to speak. The question is, are we listening? God is always wanting to speak. Okay? The question is, are we listening? So again, prophecy. What is, what is prophecy? Um, Dr. Dennis is going to talk about more of this. This is just what I've been learning. And again, when I, when I say this stuff, I'm just, t I'm just saying from what I've been learning. Okay, I like to say, in fact, I told this to a pastor I was having lunch with this, this last weekend. It was this beautiful exchange. He's, he's a Baptist pastor, and he said, you know, Jordan, I was a sensation, cessationist for 30 years. <laughs> everything in seminary, everything I've ever believed, I thought the spiritual gifts died. And he's like, God really challenged me in the last few years. He said, I just couldn't find it in the Bible where it says the gifts stopped. I said, that's because they didn't. He's like, I know. It's amazing. And we had this beautiful exchange talking about the gifts, all right? So keep him. I just want to tell you what I told him. We're all going to get to heaven one day, and we're going to be like, whoa, I was wrong on that, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's important. It's an important um, thing to carry is this idea of humility and that God can change your mind. Come on, that's part of sanctification, can God change my mind about something I've always believed? Okay, so, well, you might say, yeah, but Jordan, what about the office of prophetic or the or office of prophet versus being prophetic? So we're not all called to the office of prophet, right? But we all, I believe, can be prophetic in a sense, meaning just like Paul said at the end of that, that chapter that I put in your notes, 1 Corinthians 12, he said, seek these gifts, seek the higher gifts, he even says. He says, I wish that all would prophesy, prophesy. In fact, he even explains why. He says, these other gifts are beautiful. He says, hey, when someone's speaking in, in, in tongues, you know, let it be done in decency and order so that everyone can understand. But what does he say about prophecy? He says, well, with prophecy, you can all, all are edified. Everybody can understand. Everybody, in fact, I'll often when someone is prophesied to, like in a group, like a life group, remember, because most of the time your gifts are used are in a life group. Not, not a Sunday morning between 9 and 11. Most of the time your gifts are used are in a small group of people you're in genuine community with. So when you're there, in that group of 10 people, you might say something you don't even know you're prophesying. Hey, I was praying for you and I thought this. Well, they might know that somebody else in the group knows what you're going through. How many guys have ever had that? Someone's receiving a prophetic word and you're like, that I know what's going on. So you're excited for that person. You're excited for that person getting that courage and getting that, and that, that spirit, your spirit bears witness, all right? But the office of a prophet is given by Jesus as a gift to the church. 
All right, that's what Ephesians 4 says, is he gives these five-fold gifts to the church. And I'm not trying to uh, wrestle with semantics, but the Holy Spirit gives the gifts to us. Everybody say, that's me. But Jesus, it says, for whatever reason, I know it's triune God, I know it's one God, but in their respective roles, the word says that Jesus gives the gifts of the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the, uh, the shepherd, all right? These fivefold gifts that he gives are, are from him so that we can what? Be equipped. Be equipped, all right? So prophecy, again, what does it do, though? It reconciles people to God. When I was teaching on this a couple of years ago, this isn't in your notes, but I was trying to make it really easy to kind of grab a hold of. I love to compartmentalize. It helps me understand. I think prophecy can, can in a way, three things, can confirm, confront, or comfort. So that man in Bob Evans, he was comforted. You see that? He was comforted, encouraged. Oh, God knows me. I have the courage now to keep going. Sometimes it can confront. That's mostly what we see in the Old Testament. It's mostly what we see in the Old Testament is Nehemiah or any of these minor prophets. They're confronting the sins of a nation in the office of prophet. Now, by the way, it is not your job to confront. In fact, it's never your job to embarrass. Everybody say amen. So even if God gives you a word of discernment, red light. Not a good idea to say out loud what you think the sin of someone, someone else's sin. Why is that? I want you to everybody look up here for a second. Jesus, what does he primarily do? He gives grace, renewal. What does Satan do? Accuser of the brethren. Wow, right? So you can be more like Jesus or more like this. So even if you discern someone's wrong, what you want to do is Matthew 5, Matthew 18, privately, humbly. Again, you can discern it. God can give you a prophetic gift of where you discern something's wrong. My first time I ever experienced this, I was in my first year of Bible college. My a mentor in my life, Pastor, or well, she wasn't Pastor, but jo Jody Harrington. She was the administrator for Brother Richard. And she kept encouraging me in my prophetic gift. And I didn't really know, I quite know what it means, you know, I'm 19 years old. But she just kept saying, you have a prophetic gift and you need to obey. And sometimes God's get well, 99% of the time, your prophetic words are, are confirming and they're comforting. But this one time, I definitely had a confronting thing. And I, I knew my, my roommate was, was going to be tempted. Um, uh, sexually, and, and, and maybe be removed from school. So I privately told him, privately. He said, oh, man, that would never happen, privately. Everybody, everybody say privately. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Turn to your friend and say, don't be an idiot. No, I'm kidding. Don't say that. <laughs> Stop in your notes. Um, so privately, I share this with him. Guess what happened four months later? Right? An old girlfriend came to visit. And it broke my heart. And I still can't wrestle with that. I still don't know what to do with that. That I share with him. That I, you know, now God restored him. He came back to school. And he's beautifully married. And he's in, in ministry. And it's beautiful. Um, so there are times when you can discern something that you know is wrong. But just, just, just go real slow. Amen? Pray about it. Sometimes their only role is to pray, just to intercede for them. Um, but if he gives you the green light to talk to them, privately. Amen? Why? God wants to reconcile people. So prophecy makes you more effective, I think. Uh, let me add that. God makes you more effective. Because... In a, in a moment, the Holy Spirit can confirm to you something that you need confirmation on so you don't waste your time doing the thing you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> can I say that again? <laughs> like, when someone, if Jeremiah comes up and prophesies to me, 
and I've been praying about it. Now I'm confirmed that I'm going on the right path and I'm not wasting my time on the wrong path. You see that? So that makes you more, that's beautiful. It makes the kingdom of God more effective. I have so many stories right now, mostly involving Will, but for the sake of time. There's been so many times that Will has prophesied to me and I'm like, whoa, that's exactly what I needed to hear. That confirmed right? That, that's guiding me. Uh, I'll give you one more story because I really want to give Dr. Dennis enough time. Um, a few, I have a few stories that when people were uh, different times when I needed to say yes. Um, I think of even our church planning mission. When, I, when someone first gave me that word, I was like, no, thanks, God. <laughs> That's a little much. I, I was. I really, I was really wrestling with it. And it wasn't until a second person gave me the exact same word that, that the Holy Spirit's like, all right, hey, you going to obey me or not? Right? So what that did is that confirmed to me that I have to say yes in that. And so what does that do? It gives me the courage to obey God. And so much, so often, fruit follows the obedience, but obedience follows the word. And so when you were given a word, you now have to wrestle with, okay, God, one, is this surprising to me? So now I've got to test the word, right? Of course. But if you know already, like the second, how many guys have ever had somebody gives you a word and you know right away it's God, God is definitely getting your attention, Right? And again, sometimes it's just to say, good job. Would God do that? Absolutely. He's a father. I do that to my kids all the time. Good job. Right? High five, right? But sometimes it's also like, good job. Keep going. And you need to, you need to do this thing you've been praying about. Sometimes I'll just say, too, it will kind of surprise you. One of these times, um, I'll share this. I was, I was just stepping. I had just stepped out of youth ministry. So this is probably 2000. 12, 2013 at the most, and was going to focus that time on, on just um, writing for other artists and music and, and whatever the Lord would entail with music, with studio, but traveling, whatever with music, right? Well, I go up to this event, an event very much like this, actually. It was a Saturday morning, and I went up to receive prayer from Jan Painter, and she's this kind of prophetic voice, and, and she totally reads my mail. I mean, described me to a T. She's like, you sing on semi-truck trailer beds. I'm like, yes. You know, like, she's like, and you have 10 albums. I was like, yes. It was exactly, I mean, she was exact, precise. So I'm feeling comfort. I'm feeling encouraged. You know, it's like, I'm proud of you. And at the end, she says, and I'll give you many keys to many properties for your big dreams. And I was like, well, I remember what the Lord did was the Lord reminded me of something I wrote down in that room upstairs with Dr. Harnett's class on the Dave Ramsey class. And I had written down, maybe real estate for orphan care. I want to do that one day. I want to do orphan care, maybe have real estate. Well, in the moment, you see, the Holy Spirit can do like that. Everybody just snap your, snap your fingers, just, right? One more time. Like that, the Holy Spirit can say, hey, don't forget that. You see, the Holy Spirit can say, hey, remember that? Remember that promise? And so in that moment, I was like, oh, but I don't know anything about real estate. <laughs> right? So what I did, I just started reading, get some podcasts, started reading a few books, started learning, started driving through some streets and put an offer in on a house, took out a small loan, went over there, worked my butt off. Right? Yes, you have a part to play. Yes, you have a part to play. Obedience. Turn around. Turn around to your friends. Say, yes, you have a part. I love what Chris Valentin says about the prophetic. After you receive a word, you don't just put it on the shelf and say, if it's God, it'll happen. You say, what's my role? What's my role in this? So, didn't know how to do drywall, but I figured it out. Went over there, figured it out. Well, that turned into something else, and then that good profit, and then it turned to another house, good profit, and the crew now does a great job, and we, we fund orphan care, 
with kings own properties. How beautiful is that? And I'm going to tell you something. I promise you right now, if she hadn't given me that word, I don't know how faithful I would have been with that. You, you see, a prophecy takes something from idea to, to plan. A prophecy makes something go, oh, that's an idea. Oh, 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 God, that's something you want me to do. It can kind of make you go, was that an idea? Oh, wait, that's an assignment on my life. Amen? All right, so there's more in your notes because I just wanted to blabber for a while, and I didn't have, I didn't have five hours to blabber. I only gave myself 39 minutes. But um, why don't you do this? Stand up and just stretch, but don't smack your neighbor unless you're feeling really Pentecostal. You can just push. Actually, we have protocols against that, so maybe don't do that. But stretch real quick. All right? And if you have to go to the bathroom, you can go, but we are going to continue, so you might just miss the first few minutes. All right, so I want you guys to put your hands together and welcome Dr. Dennis, and I'm going to mess up this name, Sembabwe. Sembemboa. <laughs> Did I nail it? Sembemboa? I'm just going to mumble after the S. All right, welcome him up one more time. Put your hands together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sempebwa, butchering my name. That is, that is actually harder for my tribe. We don't have a TH sound where I'm from in Africa, so it's harder than saying Smith. <laughs> Believe it or not, because we don't have a T. So, so we, usually, we typically say Smith. Smith. It's like in school, there, there, over there. Because we go over that, you know, because our teachers can still do that. Get it right. So, smush, smister smush. So, sempebwa. You want to try again? Sempebwa. It actually means gift. It means that which has been given, you know. So, Pastor, I'm going to keep your notes over here. Okay. I could have, could have, could have used it. All right. Thank you, Lord. It's a, uh, um, um. Thank you for having me, Pastor here, Pastor Jordan. Thank you for, for uh, being courageous to do this. And, and actually, I'll say this at first. Also, I want to thank Michelle. Michelle is here. Michelle Gain. It's she's, she's the reason we're here. Uh, and an old, old friend. Oh, not old, old. Okay, don't look at the old, old part. She's, a, she's, a, she's an old friend and, and a partner, partner with us. And we've been around the world together, her and her husband. So it's good to be here. Um, it's, um, I believe, first of all, before I say, I, I say anything, um, I believe there's, there's a preemptive strike on the prophetic. Preemptive strike meaning the enemy's nervous about this. And, and so there's been a lot of like, you know, these days, if you say prophet, they're like, you know, because there's been these blunders and these mistakes. And I believe it, the enemy wants to do this at a time when we really need to hear from the Lord. How I many you know that? We really need to hear the Lord needs to speak. He has opinions. He has opinions about what's going on, politic, from politically to in our homes, in our lives, especially though, particularly though, the state of the church and the hour in which we live. What do you say? Hour. So when I say hour, say this hour. Yeah, this is, a, this is you are born for such a time as this. You are born for now. We're born for now. And so um, I, I'm going to speak. Uh, I, I, I don't want to. Uh, the Lord has held me back from preparing anything specific and uh, until now. Now I know why. I want to just, just, can I just highlight some of the notes? Is that okay? Is that okay? I can just highlight some of the notes and bring a perspective. I got saved. Let me tell you where, where my, my story begins. Um, Africa, Uganda, 12 years old. Idi Amin, bloodshed, it's, it's terrible life. Uh, you know, uh, life expectancy was about 37 and a half. I just, I, you know, death everywhere. If you saw a 50-year-old man in my village, they were very old because nobody grew old. Nobody, nobody made it. If a cobra didn't bite you, something killed you. Something was going to kill you. Hunger, starvation, disease, malaria, mosquitoes. It was just tough. And, and there I am. I accept Jesus and when I accept Jesus, the pastors, the, I was, I, I, they told me, you need the Holy Ghost. I was like, holy what? 
Holy Ghost, because in my tribe that does not sound good at all. It is, in fact, it literally means a ghost which is holy. So I'm like, whoa, there are holy ghosts? No, no, you need the Holy Ghost, you know. And this, this Asha was trying to be, to sound Elizabethan, you know. <laughs> Instead of Holy Spirit, she said, holy, you need the Holy Ghost. Okay, ghost, okay, ghost. And Omoyo Mutukov. So I translated it so to, to, to infer there is a ghost which is holy. That must come upon you. Because we, we didn't have full Bibles. I have, we had the little book of John. That's all I had. So the concept was so, like, what? Remember, first generation Christian, all we've known is witchcraft. I get saved. And I was told, in order for you to live this life, you need the Holy Ghost. And, and I was so hungry. I said, yes. How do I do it? I want it. Then, then, then they said, well, you need to fast. You need to fast for three days. Of course, you don't need to. But that's what they believed. You need to fast for three days. I said, fasting, what is that? Now, they didn't explain to me what that, you know. They just told me, don't put anything in your mouth. So I said, okay. Three days. Okay. So I went home and I'm just like, I want the Holy Ghost. I want this Holy Ghost. I'm not eating. Mommy, I'm not eating. She said, really? Why? I said, I need the Holy Ghost. I was told I need to fast three days. So, so I'm fasting. I'm fasting. So day one, you know, I, growing up in Africa, you easily go a day without food. You know, you're okay. But I'm sure many would relate to this. The minute I said I am fasting by 10 a.m., I'm like, ooh, I'm hungry. I'm like, ooh, what is this? What's that? Did anybody ever explain that? Psychologically, you're, you know, stuff's working against you. So I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. Day one, I am so hungry because in Africa, there's certain grasses that you can eat, you know, because again, the equator is amazing. There's, there's plants everywhere. We just, you climb down all the mango trees, all the guava trees, everything's so like, I want to, I want to, I want to. So no, you're fasting, you're fasting. So I got to go to school. So I'm fasting. Um, at night, I'm like almost dying, you know. So my mom's like, you need to eat. I said, no, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. You know, day one, day two, day three. Now I'm like, uh, uh. they didn't tell me you need to drink. I'm 12 years old. So, so mom is like, you're going to dehydrate. No, no, I need the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. So, so then I had to walk the third day. You have to walk to school, I mean to the church, to receive the Holy Ghost on the third day before you eat. So I'm 12, of course, I'm like dizzy. Now I'm dizzy, I'm like, oh. So 6 a.m., go walking to church to get, receive the Holy Ghost. So I get there, there's like 50 of us in the room. I can barely see, everything is, everything is double. Everybody's double, everybody, two. It's like, feels, looks like 200 people because I'm so hungry. So, um, so, so she comes, I remember her like yesterday. In fact, we were there last week because I wanted to go there. I haven't been there in 40 years, you know. And so I, I went there, and uh, I went to the little room, uh, all of us in this room, and Mama Mary, we called her, she comes out, and she's like, she has a little white, you know, and she, she comes, she's got the big Bible, puts it down, boom. She says, do you want the Holy Ghost? And we're all like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, what is, what is that, you know? So she opens, boom, Acts chapter 2. And begins to read. Just begins to read. As they were gathered in one accord. And I'm feeling. First of all I'm sober like this. Like all the hunger is gone. I'm like. She's reading. Like reading like she's. Almost reading like in slow motion. Because she's reading. And as they were. And their cloven tongues. As of, she's, re, she's just reading. And as she's reading. I'm feeling, okay, it's hot. It's hot. It's really hot. It's hot. Now, I want to praise God. I compunction. I want to praise God. All of us, now all of us are like, and we start to, to just, pr we just burst out praising God. Hallelujah. Hall and we're saying, we're saying praise God. She's reading. She's just reading. And then I start feeling like, ooh, ooh, what's that? I can't understand what I'm saying. What am I saying? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make So I'm thinking, stop, stop, Danny, stop. And I'm thinking, oh, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm speaking these things, these things. As she's reading, and she's done, she closes the Bible and walks away. 
the whole room is like, whoa. We're all like speaking in tongues, joy. We're laughing. We're crying. We're like speaking scriptures. We're just like, and as right there, I get this information. 20 miles from here, there 70 people are dead. 20 miles from here, 70 people are dead. I'm like, well, what? what? I'm not supposed to have, I'm not supposed to know that. I'm not supposed to know that. What's that? So, so it's but an interruptive thought, very clear. So, people are dead. so uh, okay. So, so we calm down. Now I'm like, so like, ooh. And now I'm thinking porridge, porridge. I want to eat, I want to eat, I want to drink, I want to eat. So I want to go break my fast. And we start going to this little room where the pot of porridge. We, so I walk home. I get home and I tell my mom, mommy, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I want to, I want to, and I wanted to, I wanted to just tell everybody. I want to, I want to tell everybody about Jesus. I want to tell them about Jesus. So, so I'm, um, then the little radio is on because we used to listen to radio because it's in crazy Uganda. You, there's no infrastructure is completely collapsed. If you lost somebody that you have to listen on the radio in case they even know, you know, people would be, bodies would be left in the, in the street like dogs, you know, because everything broke down. There was no ambulance services. We had two fire trucks in a city of a million dollars, million, million people. So just, just if there was fire, neighbors have to bring little pails and, and put it out like that. You had to let off a little scream. So just, just crazy. And so everyone listened to the radio at around one o'clock to just, who, relatives dead so well, we're listening and the news came on by the river Nile there's a bridge it collapsed the bus has capsized into the river and 70 people are dead so I was like whoa that's the knowledge I got that knowledge I got that no and I'm like whoa, what was that and I, and the Holy Ghost. It must be the ghost. It must be the ghost. The ghost. The, the Holy Ghost. But that's how it begins for me. I would get this knowledge. I call it knowledge. Um, I didn't even know what it was. And and I would now, of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. And sometimes I was, I was immature. You know, I'd be praying for people. I was like, yeah, you are sleeping with the woman. He's not your husband. You should not do that. I mean, this is in a meeting, in a meeting. And they'll be so embarrassed. And I'm thinking, well, that's what I saw. So I, so pastor had to come and tell me, Dennis, you can't do that. I'm like, but that's what I saw. I see. Isn't that correct? Isn't that correct? And she, the guy, poor guy would be like, yes, yes, but we'd never come back. We'd never come back. So I'm thinking, okay, but so I had to learn. I had to learn the, to to manage to 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 walk in the gift uh, in the gift and 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 so it, it's it's uh, <laughs> I could tell you also a thousand stories a thousand stories ten thousand stories so I, I'd go out and and so it's been forty two years of ministry I've been to eighty countries and this of course has grown. Um, to to uh, uh, incredible proportions, to words, to presidents, to for, to all of that at, at at certain levels, and I'd like to just accentuate some of these thoughts, if 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 it's okay, for a few minutes, and then pa pa Pastor Jordan may have told you, then we're going to do some things here. Is it okay? Is it okay right now? Because because uh, you know I I come from this is I've got now I've got three doctorate degrees and all that. So I have uh, the theology around it, but I have the privilege of saying I was introduced to this without head knowledge. I went and we did. We had a group. We did. We made you should, you should I tell you stories about how we first realized the healing gifts, for example. We just were reading Book of John, Book of John, Book of John, decided, you know what? We just got to, we're just gonna, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. So we go out and just start praying for people and emptied an, a hospital ward. You know, me and my boys, like seven of us, all of us, all of us, all of us, 12, 13, 4, 12, 13 was the oldest, but we just did. We did. We got the gospel, we got saved to do. 
the gospel is a doing message. You don't receive Jesus just to know stuff. Headgate, yes, you understand some things, but where I'm from, it's, it's the, the head bypass. Head bypass. Head bypass. In fact, that's the, uh, the pr- problem with the trouble I, I find, you know, ministering here in America is everything is filtered up here. And it's ironic how you get saved by heart gate, amen, because how many know salvation doesn't make sense? How many know everything doesn't make sense? Jesus, you came 2,000 years ago, died for you. Uh, he died, all right, a long time ago. But what he did, uh, if, you rec- if you accept what he did, oh, by the way, he's here right now, okay? Okay, he's here now, okay, he's here. But if you accept what he did, this ridiculous story 2,000 years ago, the story comes alive, and you will be forgiven of your sins today. Wait, what about 2,000 years ago? I know 2,000 years ago. Yeah, to, the, it, the, it was paid for 2,000 years ago. But today, if you receive, if you understand that story, but you, wait, but you can't understand. But you can't understand. Okay, don't understand it. Receive it. Because it was never meant to be understood. This is meant to be believed. We believe. We believe. Amen. You believe. And it's so a mystery to me. Even last week, when an when, when event, when 500 people get saved. Like, shh. You know, but I'm still mesmerized. How does a sinner get saved? How does somebody who's on drugs, okay, or, or a, 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 a prostitute, let's, let's get the worst, drug dealer, prostitute, child molester, whatever, to name them. He's there. He hears somebody like me say certain things about a crazy story about a man, to, and he's just crying. Have we figured that out yet? How he comes crying and he's crying and, and then, oh, for us it's so big in Africa because they come later and they say, um, I have three wives. I just got saved, but I think I should keep one. And we're like, yes, yes, keep one. I mean, nobody, no, it's amazing because again, we don't have a teaching based faith culture. It's encounter. Jesus comes into your life. He wrecks your life. And I mean, they bring their records. We still have record players, you know, records. And like, I can't listen to this. Why? I don't know. That music, I don't like, it's my reggae. I love reggae. I love Bob Marley. But but something is wrong. Why can't I listen to my music? I'm like, Holy Ghost, right? The Holy Ghost. Because if it's authentic, if you authentically get saved, there are, I call them vital signs. A love for the Lord, a love for the house, a love for God's people, a love, a hate, this sin makes you uncomfortable. Right? So all, all of that is heart gate, amen, heart. But the irony of it, how we, as we mature, we now go heady. We go heady, everything has to make sense. Does that make sense? You can't walk in the realms of the prophetic if you're going to be heady. Amen? Now you're like, well, but I need to think, yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. And okay, okay, cool. For example, here, prophecy. Speaking in human words, the definition, you know, what God miraculously, spontaneously brings to mind. It would say human words. The problem, are you ready for this? God doesn't speak English. <laughs> he doesn't speak, God's not like, God, he doesn't speak English. Hey, I'm in Uganda. I didn't know English. My God spoke to me in Luganda. And not, he doesn't use, we are downloading, I'll use the word, I don't like that word a lot. We're downloading God's information from the Holy Ghost and we are filtering it through this intellect and we're, we're articulating, this is, this is huge. We're attempting to articulate things that are inarticulatable in English. For infinite thoughts in a finite language. No wonder we make mistakes, right? No wonder we say and undersay, oversay, exaggerate, explain, overexplain. We're going to because this is God saying, I love her. And you're saying, the Lord says, I love you. Does that even begin to do it? Of course not. You're saying, because again, we're going to talk about this too. Just a little bit. I want to touch on this a little bit. Um, the Lord, first of all, God doesn't have to, 
speak in huge paragraphs, by the way. Because where, where did we even get that? You know, because do you know, the, the, and these, these barriers of these norms have actually, which, are, which is what I like for you doing, Pastor Jordan, have actually kept people from walking into the prophetic. Because you're not like me. You don't know how to do it like me. You don't, know, you don't have the language. I have the language. I've been doing it a long time. So thus says the hitherto four. Hey, you should see. Because, okay, we started moving in the prophetic. and We're moving in the gifts. And these guys came from England to Africa. Did a workshop. And they spoke Elizabethan English. Which is the thus, thou, thou, hither, the, 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 that. We didn't have those. But we had good news Bibles in Africa. So I had never even seen henceforth, hitherto for, tether, tether. Sorry, there's no tether, is there? No, there's no tether. So, 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 he, so he comes out. Oh, he, come, he comes out. He says, for the Lord would say. I'm like, ooh, that's, that's really interesting, putting it that way. The Lord would say. Because how many of you that's not conversational? That's not, that's not conversational English. But oh, thus the Lord would say to thee, I am with thee. And I will make my word as a springboard. And it's, I was like, whoa, whoa. It was so profound. And for a while after they left, we didn't want to, I didn't want to get on the microphone. Because I did not know how to do it like that. Because the Brits came and they do it so profoundly. Cause, and I'm thinking of afterwards, I thought, I don't have the, how do I learn how to, the, the thy word, thy thens. This is what I learned when I'm talking to you about that God doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak your English. Sometimes, again, I, I've been with people who just, you know, hey, step out. But I don't have the words. Well, you, speak, speak, speak. And you know what? The Lord says he cares for you. And, and then she's trying to say, I said, no, you don't, have, you don't have to add more. Can you say what the Lord is saying and then stop? Because remember, how I many know you don't have to make God's case, do you? No, oh, come on. The Lord says, I care for you. One day I was in a church and 8,000 people were in the Philippines. And the Lord says, you prophesy to everyone. I was like, well, I can't do it. I said, I said it's going to take forever. I said, well, you're thinking that. I said, start. I was like, ooh. And it was like, I love you. I care for you. You don't have to do that again. The orange shirt pink, big, orange shirt. And she was like, oh my God. That's my so I would just like, boom, boom. I don't need to even say, and does that make sense? Do you know that you don't have to do that? Because sometimes, I mean, no, sometimes it doesn't make sense. And, and, and where did we get the idea that everything God tells you must make sense? Because you know, the, by believing that you just limited God's conversations with you. Can you imagine, imagine your dad? How many dads are, dads are here? Your, your dad coming and saying, um, to, you're raising your five-year-old. And you say, okay, five-year-old, I'm going to raise you, but um, I want you to agree with everything I say. Or you, or, okay, you need to bear witness to everything I say. You've just limited what your dad can tell you. Because how many know your dad sometimes going to say, uh, don't do that. And you're going to be like, mm, mm. You know, because there's this thing of confirmation. Yes, yes, I'm big on that. Bearing witness, amen. But how many know sometimes the Lord will tell you something and you're like, uh, I don't know about that one. Right? Like, like he said, he said so, so, this, so it's never, some of the absolutes have actually crippled the full, the full manifestation of this amazing gift. The absolutes that we have created. And, and I know why we've created them. We've created them to, to, to get rid of the crazies. Because this office of the prophetic has a lot of crazy people. I totally understand why pastors do not want prophetic gifts. Or because prophecy, man. You know, I've been, I've been with people. And they've said that I've been with in, in events. And this prophetic guy has come and said, well, you, you, you. You know, tell like worship minister. You, um, the Lord's got bigger doors for you than this church. You need to go out and the Lord's going to, and, and they've wrecked the church. Uh, sometimes an associate, he's really good. But the prophet comes and says, um, 
You need to start your own work. Hallelujah. The Lord says there's a work, there's a church inside of you. Oh yeah, no, two church. And, and the guy's gone off. So when, if I am going to move in the prophetic for exa- in this weekend, for example, everything I say, I am fully submitted to the house. Everything. Everything I say. In fact, if I, if I say something that doesn't make sense, Pastor Jordan, De- Doc, Dr. Dennis said something. What do you think? It has to be. Bible says, be ye submitted one to another. In fact, in fact, here, here, here here's what here's scripture. This is pretty cool. Um, first Corinthians, first Thessalonians 5:19, New Living Translation. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit, which is cool. Amen. Don't stifle him. And then it says, Do not scoff at prophecies. So that's important. And then it says this, but test everything that is said. Amen. Amen. And then it says, hold on to what's good. I mean, sometimes things that are said are not good. <laughs> that's, that's what it implies. So, so we, we serve under the covering and, and the jurisdiction of, 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 of you know, the, the, the house and, and the, the shepherd of the house. So, so yeah, you, um, so there are several things I wrote down here as I'm finishing here. He doesn't speak English. You don't have to be eloquent. You don't have to be super deep. You don't also have to fully explain. Amen. This is from my notes here. And then, um, and then it says uh, three, three important truths. Number three, God is always wanting to speak and reveal. Amen. The, questions are, the question is, are we his people listening? Amen. Are we listening? Are we listening? Because sometimes he's already spoken. Do you know how many people that I know that... <laughs> That uh, um, you want to buy a house, but it's too much for you, and you don't have the money. Which is, ah, the Lord is, I want the Lord to tell me if I really need to buy the house. Well, can you afford it? No, I can't. But um, but but uh, but uh, my wife and I were driving around it, and and you know, you say, okay, your wife is pregnant. You she's just lost her. You just you, you have a single income, and you're supposed to put commit to this house right now. Um, uh, sorry circumstances. They're road signs. I mean, you know, sometimes road signs are saying, no, you don't need the prophetic word. <laughs> oh, do you know how many people have actually said, um, yeah, I think the Lord showed me my wife. I think she's over there. I'm like, whoa, that's, oh, first of all, avoid those words, okay? And so, so, and so oh, then, then you find out she's married. How many know that's not the, the end of story? But oh no, oh no, they don't end the story. They're like, you know what? You know, something must be wrong. Something must, be, something must be, like. And then, then I've actually even even heard people say, just if the thing, think she must be married to the wrong man, because she's supposed to be mine. Oh, I've got a personal story. Oh no, I shouldn't. Did I say this? Personal story. Okay, I, get, I find my wife thirty years ago. I mean, go through a rigorous confirmation process. Ingrid is my wife. We we'll fast 40 days and not talk to each other 40 days. Right before we, 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 before we got engaged, I, I'm just thinking she's the one. She's the one. She's from Romania. She's, we're very different. I'm from, from Africa. She's white. She doesn't even tan. She's, she's just white, white. And, and so, so it's just trouble. My village, there's, you know, I'm first born of six in my which is big uh, in my tribe. I'm supposed to marry a Muganda girl. So I have sustained the integrity of the bloodline. It's on me. So, so this idea of marrying a white girl, um, forget even white girl. In fact, when I tell my wife, my, my mother, I think I found a girl. She's like, she's like holding her, her. She's like, what? What do you mean? I said, is she a Muganda? I said, no, she's not. My, my wife is like, my mother's like, she's not? Because it's you have to marry my tribe, you know your tribe. So what's funny is when I tell her um, she's actually white, my mom says, "Oh, good, that's better." Because in my tribe, you don't marry other tribes. In fact, we have more prejudice against other blacks who look like me than a white girl. Because because you're going to ruin the bloodline, ruin the bloodline. So okay, story. Uh, you have to story, Dennis, story. So, because I've got so many in here. So, so we go through this process, 
It is the Lord. I may not go to places. During the 40-day fast, I go to places. People who didn't even know me say, you are in an interracial relationship. The Lord says, it is of me. Do not be. So I knew for sure. She's also in Chicago. She also knew for sure. So, so ready, we get engaged. This prophet in, in, in London hears about, about it. She's, I mean, big prophetess. She would prophesy bridges and, and I mean, uh, storms and weather issues. I mean, all the way to the parliament, British parliament, she's that level of prophetic gift. So, so she says, she says, I need to talk to Dennis. I need to talk to Dennis. I'm like, uh oh, Lucy wants to talk to me. Yeah, that's her name. Lucy's not listening. She's not listening. So we're not live, right? We're not live. Okay, good. So Lucy's not listening. Uh, yeah, she's not listening. <laughs> so Lucy hears and listen, Lucy, Lucy wants to talk to me. Lucy says, you're missing God. That is not your wife, says the Lord. And I'm like, oh, whoa. I said, Lucy, are you sure? Because she knew me. She knew I was prophetic too. She said, are you sure? She said, oh, yeah, Dennis, I am sure. And I'm like, but Lucy, I, 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 am, I am sure it is. And, of course, I'm not even suggesting before you marry, you must know. I'm not suggesting that, but... For some reason, the Lord found it important that I know his mind concerning this woman because of what we were going to go through, you know, with all the battles, with the tribes and all that. So, so um, she, she insists. She insists. And I'm like, oh, she, she said, you're going to miss God. In fact, so, so she calls me again after a few weeks and says, did you, did you break it off? I'm like, no, I didn't break it off. Lucy, it is the Lord. It is the Lord. The Lord wants me to marry this girl, Lucy. We've gone. So she says, you know, if, if you want, I will tell you who it is that you're supposed to marry. I'm like, ooh. Now there's ding, ding. Shouldn't do. Something, something's wrong. Something's wrong here because, wow, God's going to really, okay, tell you my wife. And it's okay. Um, um, so I, I, I go to talk. I, so, I, so I said, okay, you know, okay, who is it? And then, she, who said that? <laughs> she said, somebody, then she said, it's me. You're supposed to marry me. And I'm like, ooh, I'm thinking, I don't like you like that. Oh, no, <laughs> this is not going to work. I said, Lucy, I'm so sorry, Lucy. I'm so sorry. It's, it's a, uh, you know, she was, she was way off. She got, she got really heart hurt. Because I told her, you know, I told her, no, that's, that's, let's see, because her emotions, which is one of, what, one of the things I'm going to say, which is why we need submission. Sometimes your emotions can masquerade like the Holy Ghost. Because the, the most prominent way that we hear is, it's, it's called inward revelation. The Lord drops something. Sometimes your mind will drop stuff. Sometimes your mind can masquerade. You want this, you want this outcome Hey, the Lord says, I feel this outcome. Boom. Do you know, do you know why we got it wrong on COVID? Or, or Trump. Okay, let's talk about Trump. We got it wrong on Trump because a lot of prophets wanted that outcome and their emotions masqueraded as, you know, and, and it, again, you, it's controversial. Some people say he's still president, you know, you know okay. It, you know, it's, it's a, so, so, but, but there, was, there was exact, some prophets actually said, He's going, the Lord said, this is the president, he will be sworn in. And that did not, there was a date. Or, or okay, okay, maybe that's too hot for some of you. What about, do you know, 2012, the Lord is coming back by the end of the year. The Lord says, he's, you want it so much. And it's like, you know, so that's why you have to have some people watching. That's why the Bible says, prophesy, test, that's, that, that, test everything that is said. Test if I, you know, if I say something crazy, you're supposed to you don't don't go. Hey, that's that's wrong. That's also Americans. Only Americans do that, by the way. <laughs> other other tribes, other cultures, they're just like quietly say, mm, I missed it. But an American will say, um, I don't think so. I don't think so, sir. Brother, that is not. <laughs> You're a strange tribe. <laughs> You're very boisterous. And so, 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 so you don't have to say, hey, I think you're off. You don't have to. <laughs> you, do, you don't have to. You can whisper to pastor and say, that thing is said, Ugh, you know. You know, to, yeah, the Lord says, single girl comes, a single girl comes about, and the, and the prophecy is, you know, your two children that you have, that da, 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 and it's not correct. 
Now you can say she's going to have two children, but you know, or somebody who's 60, 60 years old, and 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 you know, you're supposed to go without children, and the word is, you know, you've got five children, and da da da, da and they're not spiritual children, where something is demonstrably off. Be be gracious, be gracious. It's really important because remember, there are five ministry gifts. Everybody say five. What's ironic or funny to me or strange to me is how we give so much grace to the teacher. I mean, or the also prophet, okay, teacher. Teacher comes and says, guys, oh, I've been teaching wrong stuff. Or, or I was kind of off here. Uh, guys, I'm sorry. Let's teach it this way. Everybody says, amen. That's cool. Pastor can mess up. I shouldn't have. I should have been kinder to this couple that left. We have grace. But the prophetic... You better get it right or you're a heretic. We need to burn you at the stake, you know. So, so I think we also need to have grace as people begin to walk out in this gift, in this, in this, in this office, amen. And again, there's a difference between an office and the gift. We'll also, Pastor talks about that as well. Anybody, in fact, almost, in fact, Paul even says, desire to prophesy. So anybody can prophesy. We can all get these downloads of prophetic of, of information that is God's mind. The prophet, prophetic is basically God's mind concerning an issue, a person, a, a circumstance. Amen? Anybody can do that. But walk, but the office, just like, how many know everybody can encourage somebody? But how many know not everybody's a prophet? As, as, a, as a pastor. Pastor, wake the pastor up at 2 a.m. He's going to go to that hospital. He's going to go love that person. Amen. Same, same with teacher. Anybody can teach, right? But the teaching office, woo, he teaches. He can just go, Jesus wept and go 40 minutes. <laughs> teacher gift, amen. Uh, well, who else? Who else? Uh, evangelist. How many know we can all lead? We can all lead. We better all lead somebody to Christ. But somebody who is in the office of an evangelist, whoo, he will talk and... Because he's got that. Same with prophet. Anybody can prophesy. But a prophet, wake the prophet up at 2.30 a.m. And you don't have to have a worship song, an environment, an atmosphere. He'll just say, that says the Lord. Boom, boom, boom. Because he is in the office of the prophet. Amen. So that's one of the distinctions. But so much. Let me give you one more that I remember. And then we can just maybe even... Oh, not to embarrass. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> Talked about that. Okay, I think, I think, I think, let me give you the, okay. Um, we're not to seek, we're not to supposed to seek prophets, you guys, you know. Uh, there's, a, there's a big thing these days, there's a, there's a prophetic movement. In fact, I've, I've just done a six-week series on the prophetic for a Bible college over in Asia. And because of there's a lot of confusion, prophets are all over the place doing kind of a lot of damage. I believe this, and, I, and I, I submit to pastor on this, but my 40 years of experience tell me, instruct me this way. I think we should not isolate these ministry gifts and, and, and platform these ministry gifts in isolation because then we create dysfunction. We create distortion. Because again, remember, the five are supposed to work in this space to build the body. Amen? Amen? This is important. The five, pastor, prophet, apostle. You know. But if you take prophet out and the prophet is out building a massive prophetic ministry, how many know there is an overemphasis, of course, on the one gift, one office. And it's, it, it now, that's why a lot of prophecy has become fortune telling. People, when they hear that I move in this office, People call me, um, I'm going to invest. I'm going to buy some stock. What's the Lord saying? I'm like, that is not the, get, the reason for the gift. The, we don't get these gifts to profit us. I don't get a gift to advantage me in the stock market. You know, some, some you know, I, I need to, I need to, I need to. Uh, yeah, um, the Lord was telling me about a, a, a sale. A sale that the this, the, you know, the sale was about to end, and the Holy Ghost told me, "Go, go!" And I'm like, Ugh. "You're trivializing the prophetic. If you trivialize the prophetic, we got a problem." In fact, I usually say, "If God's gonna," and the Lord was telling me to go at a certain age, certain time, so I can get the the parking lot at the front of the mall. I'm like, 
And I'm really thinking, if the Lord's going to talk to you about a parking spot, I bet you he's going to have to instruct you to get the farthest because you need to walk. <laughs> right? If, it's, if we're talking about God's mind, do you think, you think, okay, God is thinking, man, I don't want my child to walk. So I'm going to make sure you have a spot. Now, some of you are saying, well, I pray that. I know. I pray that. The Lord's told right? Yeah, okay, okay. If you're in a hurry and you have to come to a service, yes, amen. The Lord, okay. The Lord will, this is big. This, is, this will protect you and me. We need to look for the kingdom reason behind these instructions. What is God What's God really doing that's bigger than you? If God is going to speak to me concerning something in his mind, how many know it's going to be bigger than a parking spot? Come on. How many know it's going to be bigger than, than yeah, he didn't want me to worry, so he told me to just, to just put on a song. And, and because, because, okay, I'm not saying he wouldn't do that. But if it's overly personalized, friends, we risk creating distortions. We create dysfunction. Then it's Jesus, me. This is why all the songs are me. We live in a culture of meism. Me, me, me. Everything is me. Me. And so the prophetic is for me. God wants to speak to me. Whisper to me, me, me. me. It's me everywhere. We are having to lordship. He's Lord. Lifting Jesus high. If God's speaking to you, what, where's the kingdom reason? I asked that myself. Go, okay, God wants me to, didn't want to miss my bus. Okay, why? Yes, sir, I didn't want to be late at the office because he really cares. Okay, okay, sh- sure. But you're making it so big about something so, res- with all due respect, something so trivial. Amen? So danger, you probably won't like this. And, and, the trivializing of the voice of God. That's a danger. Because that's why we start to talk about, I think this is, I think God's up to, God's going to give me my political, you know, you know, he's gonna, these, these things. These, where's the kingdom? Where's the kingdom intent? Now, of course, you can't know all the thoughts of God, but can we please make this bigger? Amen? Can we make it bigger? Make it about the kingdom. Okay, number two. Prophecy should... You know, bear witness, okay, whether uh, uh, prophets can miss it. <laughs> um, but here, under the, this last statement, statement, under the new covenant, we seek guidance from the Holy Ghost, not, for prof- not from prophets. We seek guidance from the Holy Ghost. Though those who are led by the Spirit, they're the sons of God. Not those who are led by prophets, they're the sons of God. I've got so many people who come to our events, and they're coming to get another confirmation. By the way, there's a whole, there's a whole confirmation movement too, which I'm, I'm writing a book called Distortions. This is important. The prophecy, prophetic office and the gift is really important, but it's being distorted by trivialization, personalization, and sometimes just God has spoken. How many know God does not have to always repeat himself? I'm just If you don't know, let me tell you. He doesn't. Read through the Bible. What happened? Where are the days? What happened to God telling me something that I sit with for two years? Right? No, no, I need to know. I need to know what it is. And, you know, sometimes people say, yeah, you give me a prophetic word and I understood everything, but there's this thing I didn't, I didn't understand. What was God saying? It's like, you know, I'd, first of all, I've forgotten what I said. I forget almost everything as soon as I say it because I think it does that to protect me so I don't take stuff to my wife when I go home. Um, but... But also, so I don't get it big here. A lot of people come and say, you told me this. It's translated. It's changed my business, changed my life. But, and I'm like, whoa, I did? Sometimes I'm like, whoa, I, di- I did that. That's pretty bold, you know. Because you know, under the anointing, I forget things, you know. But, I, but because it's not me. Sometimes, though, the Lord, this is big. He does not have to articulate everything for you. Sometimes you're going to sit with the word for five years and you don't know what he's saying. Keeps you there. So Lord, I, I know you've said, you've said, you've said multiplication. You've said three years, Lord. What is, what is, you know, what is coming? What is, I need to know. I need to, so you go from prophet to prophet asking for confirmations. A lot of people come and say, I want a confirmation. 
The Lord's been talking to me, but I want a confirmation. Do you know what I say? I tell him, I tell him, just go do it. Do it by faith. Prophecy does not remove walking by faith. You're still going to walk that stuff out. I love the example. You're still going to walk stuff out. You're still going to have diligence. You still have to love your wife. The Lord says, I'm giving you a brand new marriage. Amen. You don't just sit on the couch. Now go read up. Ask her. Do, do stuff. Do. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Amen. Okay. I think I'm going to... One more scripture. Hebrews 5.14, New Living Translation. Solid food is good for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. King James Version says, whose senses are exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen? Amen? Oh, no, no, no. This is what I want to intend. I wanted to read this one. 1 Corinthians 14.29. Let two or three prophesy and let the others evaluate what is said. And verse 32, and the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophets. That's really important because I've also been around friends who are prophetic and they go all spooky. They go, you know, they go, I, I, gotta get, I mean, in the middle of worship, I have to say something because I got a word. I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, can you keep the word? Because we're still doing worship right now. Unless the Lord says, get up right now and say this. You, we, what we have, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Sometimes the Lord, pastor will say to me, because remember I'm always under authority. Um, you got to give, give it to me at 11.30. 11.30, I don't care what's happening. I give it back. Do you know what most prophets do? No, the Lord's still talking. You know, they line up. And they, sometimes multiple services, which is some prophets, you invite them once. You never invite them again, especially if you have multiple services. They do the 8 o'clock, and the 8 o'clock goes till 1 p.m. And there's a, but there's a 10 p.m., so the parking lot is all full, but the prophet is still going. No, you can shut it off. You, can, you don't have to. Sometimes service is over. And I see this man walking. I've seen this about twice with a daughter. And the Lord, and I, I get a, a word, uh, revelation. He's abusing her, his daughter. And you're like, ooh, ooh. naturally, you know, as a dad, you're like, Lord. So, so um, no, my job is not to fix that. My job is to mourn and cry about that. Maybe I'm going to go back to the hotel room and say, Lord, that man, that man, Lord, that kid. And the kid looks at you. Oh, the kid looks at you and says, bye. And you're like, Ugh. you want to do stuff. Knowing stuff doesn't mean I'm going to fix it. No, I've seen that too. Sometimes the prophets, yeah, the worship, the worship here needs to be more, you know, you get a prophet, join the church. <sighs> yeah, you need, to, you need to sing different songs. It's like, uh, that's not your jurisdiction. Uh, that's not your place. Uh, God has assigned somebody who's got that. Well, if you have an idea, suggestion, say, um, again, so you need to, we need to grow in this control. You don't have to control these outcomes. You don't have to be articulate. And you don't have to, you don't have to effect any change yourself. Your job is to declare a thing. Amen. And then sometimes your job, you don't declare the thing. Sometimes you can hear a word, but no, in fact, I only say about 40% of what I hear. Because how many know God doesn't need to impress people about your color underwear is yellow and you live on this street? He doesn't need to. No, I've seen that in Nigeria. Some of these the churches are like, yeah, you stand up. You're wearing yellow underwear. And the guy's like, oh my God, oh my God. And it's like, he doesn't need to do that. God doesn't need to do that. Because sometimes I will see, I will see a date, I'll see a street number. I'll see, I don't have to say, you live on Oak Street and you live in Fergie. He doesn't get to the point. The point is, I love you. I want to heal you. Stop with the rejection. Forgive your mother. That's, that's it. Now, the word, it's, sometimes it's all I say. Okay, she's there. She's number two. She was born in this town. Call her up. I don't need to say, you. You were born in Portland. No, I don't have to. Get to the point. What's the point? The Lord loves you. He wants to heal you. Forgive your mother. That's the instruction. Forgive your mother. The stylistics. 
not necessary. Amen? That's the radical African perspective. <laughs> so, but, but, it, but it's helped me. I can say for 40, doing this 42 years, the, Lisa is our administrator. There is not anybody in any town, in any country, who can say, you told me something that hurt me because I'm very careful. I'm very careful because I believe in prophetic integrity. I have not talked to pastor about anybody here. There has to be prophetic integrity, meaning when I say here, the Lord says concerning you, I don't want you thinking, he told him. He told him, in fact, we have a policy. I don't talk to the pastor about anybody. We, don't, we can talk about cars. We can talk about our kids. But don't talk to me about the church until Sunday night, Monday night, when I'm ready to leave or when we become friends. If, in fact, if we become friends, I stop prophesying to people who are close to me concerning things that I should know. I can say, I can say hey, you know, your son, this is what the Lord says. But I don't, I don't go, hey, because I've seen pastors do this. I've seen really big prophets stand up and prophesy to their staff like they know their staff, staff members, but they're prophesying like, yeah, you've got three brothers and you've got, and everybody's like, doesn't it work for him? <laughs> With, that's called prophetic integrity. And in fact, if I know you, I, I, stop, I stop giving you words of knowledge concerning now, if the Lord says, Tell Michelle something. I don't say, no, talk to somebody. No, I don't say, Michelle, uh, you've just had a grandbaby. You know, I don't say that because that's silly, right? right? That creates an impression. Amen? Amen? All right, can we take some questions? Pastor Jordan, come here. Take some questions. Is it possible? Yeah. Before we, and then Pastor Jordan will lead us into what's next. No, just as, as you're thinking about questions, I, a quick story is I was at this songwriter's event about eight years ago. Yeah. And this will talk to you. In fact, look at your notes. Look at the very last thing I said, the very last sentence. You're going to see something that he said that's incredibly important. <clears throat> the very last sentence. It says, no matter how much the Lord flows through you, yeah. always submit to the house. Yeah. So let me give you a story. This is about eight years ago. I'm at this songwriters event, and all of the songwriters were part, like part of the registration was, hey, yeah. you're going to submit your song, and then we're all going to evaluate it together yeah. so that, hey, if you see the same 10 comments, it's probably good advice, which was beautiful. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah. So um, everybody's doing their song. Everybody's one song, and this girl comes up, and then she's about the fifth one, right? So she ends her song. She's like, I feel the Lord's telling me to do another song. And so she, now everybody's like, did he? <laughs> so she does another song. Well, then the third, th after that, as you can guess, I feel the Lord's telling me to do another song. And the MC goes, the Lord's telling you to follow the rules and sit down. <laughs> All the songwriters like this. It was so awkward. So I just say that to say, it's beautiful if suddenly, like, you realize, wow, God gave you that gift. That's awesome. But guess what, guys? I've been to a bunch of churches where as I'm ministering, I'm seeing prophetic things from people. But the, but the pastor told me to give it to him at 7, and it's 6.59. So I guess when he gets to the mic, at 6.59. Because that's his church. So I'm submitted to his authority. I can go share that with them later. So I just, I just want to echo that, that that's a huge, like God will honor your honor. God will, will honor your sense of integrity and humility and, um, yeah. But, hey, let's do a couple questions. Just, uh, and then, Will, could you, be, could, you, could you hand the mic to whoever has the question? And then we're going to um, just kind of see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And then the very last thing we're going to do, like at 12, or I'm sorry, 11.50, that's what will be our goal. We're gonna we're gonna have you guys each share a verse with somebody. Very simple. Um, ask the Lord to give you a verse for somebody. But before we do that, just some very general questions about the prophetic or spiritual gifts, and and we're gonna do our best. Oh, thanks. Got to be some some question out there. Yeah. Uh, 
been involved in the last 40 years in uh, Pentecostal ministry. And I would say, you know more today than most of my pastor friends. I, I wish we could have this kind of teaching in, in our pastoral ministry uh, conferences or whatever, because it is so uh, profoundly neglected uh, re relative to the fivefold ministry gift understanding. Yeah. And so I, I just want you to know how thankful I am for your clarity, your humility, mm -hmm. and, uh, and really your, your profound insight. Yeah. Thank you uh, for coming. I just have a question about, um, you were talking about, you know, kind of the soulish, um, that your soul can sometimes masquerade, or your feelings or emotions can masquerade as a word from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so do you have any advice for us on um, just kind of discerning that? between the soul and the spirit? I would say that the number one is just, man, be in community. Be around guys. And whenever you, you get a word, especially that's instructive, I have a personal thing. For, for example, if the Lord, for example, would tell, tell me, I want you to move your family. Move your family from Dallas to Chicago. I'm go, I go, Lord, will you please indulge me? I want to hear it again, but from somebody else. Because... I think Chicago is a brilliant idea, you know, especially if I like to go to Chicago and I hear the Lord saying, go to Chicago. I'm like, uh, is I today? I feel, is that me? Lord, I'll wait. God's not going to be like, I told you to move. You didn't go. It's okay for you to tell the Lord, I wasn't, I'm not ready. Can I, if, the, if it's an instructive word like that, you need confirmation Sometimes you need to, and, and most of all, most of all, which the, the tragedy of the American church, I'm sorry, you guys are too, too independent. You're too renegade. May I say, okay, it's what makes America amazing is what makes America weak. What makes America amazing is you don't need to be told what to do. You can do it because you want it, you know, that whole thing. But in the body of Christ, my goodness, you need somebody to say, can you, can you, can you watch me? Uh, I have, sp do I have spinach in my teeth? Because you're like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You're not good sometimes. But you guys have built this culture, which is, the, your pastor, this, I can say this because I'm leaving on Monday. When am I leaving? <laughs> this is not Jordan. He's Pastor Jordan. No, not, okay, style. I mean, title, you don't have to, but he's not like a peer. The Lord has put him over you. Now that's very like, uh, you want to think, you think, if you really ask an American, yeah, he's my pastor, he's, he's been in Bible college, he's, he knows more than me. Because the more you flatten this, the less you're going to benefit from the shepherd. He's a shepherd over you. He should be able to. In fact, when people are getting close to, uh, to me and they're getting close, they're like, okay, Dennis, can we go to a football game? I'm like, okay, we can go to. I mean, they've, if they've come in as, I, I, think, I think God's called you to speak into our life as a family, blah, 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 but, but they start to want friendship. I'm like, okay. So, so sometimes these days I'm getting, I actually warn them. I say, the more we become friends, the less you're going to lose Dennis there mentor, whatever, because how I many know oh, you can't tell a friend, I think you're rude to your wife. How I many know oh, you can't do that? Because he's a friend. So the, the more you flatten this, the less you'll benefit from, because, the, because if it's too flat, if your pastor is your peer, he can't tell you, I notice, where's your wife? Uh, your kid, he's... He's doing his worship with his hands. Are you sure you guys are okay? He can't because he's your buddy. It's too flat. Too flat. So this is big in your culture. Please get it from me. Hear it from me who's, because this part of the culture is much more, our part of the culture that reveres authority is much more biblical. 
submit to authority. So if you've got a word that's confusing, how cool, and I've done this many times, to say, God's saying something to me? Pastor, will you pray with me? And, and will you discern with me? And oftentimes when the pastor, if the pastor has said, I really feel the Lord is saying that, I'll say, yeah, amen. I will do it. I'll honor, because I don't know what to do. And how many of you, sometimes you, you're not mature enough to discern certain things that you need somebody who's been around the block to say, uh, I wouldn't do that. Or to even say, that does not sound like the Holy Ghost. Those are your emotions. But if it's your peer, you just think he's just being mean. He doesn't want, you know what? He doesn't want me to go launch. No, he loves you. But, he, but you've given him this jurisdiction in your life to say, um, I think you're missing something. Or how about this? Not yet. Mm -mm. We don't want to hear not yet. Because, you know, the Lord's telling me to launch out. No, no, not yet. Can you hear not yet from the man or woman whom God has put over you? So that's, that's a cultural perspective. But that's the greatest protection you have is, is, is submission to a man, a godly man or woman who, or community where you can get counsel when it's looking foggy. Because there will be lots of fog. There's going to be lots of fog. I have fog. I've got foggy days. But I've got a man, a woman who speaks into my life. And I say, I don't know if we should, you know. So, so some, and sometimes you will actually, you will hear the voice of God through this counsel. So that's what I'll say. I don't know if you would know the answer to this. Um, sometimes I will dream in real life and something even though it wasn't exact, would happen. And I don't know if that would be part of the prophetic. Yeah. I, but it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. But once in a blue moon since I was a child, this would happen. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I, these visions, what we call them, like a dream during the day, are so powerful, and sometimes there's a dream that's literally while you're sleeping. Uh, one of the craziest God things that ever happened to me was a very vivid dream. So a vision, we could say, okay, I saw a picture, and that's typically like how the prophetic works with me. I see a picture play out in my mind. But about, um, I don't know, Danielle's better with the dates than me, but two or three years ago, I had this dream. And when I woke up, I told Danielle that was a God dream. I know it. Yeah. And it was very vivid. I was walking into this huge white brick house, like 3,000 square foot brick house, brown wooden pillars, and a tall blonde guy walking me in. And when I walked in, there was leaders everywhere. Yeah. And I felt humbled to be there. And I woke up. And I said, that was a dream. I don't know what it means. Yeah. No idea. Weird, 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 weird. It was about six months later, yeah. we go to Texas. And as I'm walking down the driveway, I'm walking in, white brick house, Two wooden pillars, blonde guy walking me in. And everything, like, Holy Spirit. You know when you're, all your skin just goes, right? Like, all your hair stand up. I was like, yeah. and I was like, I go, Danielle, this is my dream. Yeah. I had this dream. Remember this dream? Yeah. And it turns out that was something God want. God, I, so now I'm really paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I'm like, I'm saying, God, if, you're, if you told me I was going to be here, yeah. I'm paying close attention now. Yeah extra close yeah. and we always should be but I was just paying extra close yeah. and sure enough God brought up about some really cool partnerships from some big things I was praying about through people yeah. in that circle that could not have happened otherwise Absolutely. and I have no explanation other than saying it was God's goodness and maybe write them down I try to write down some of them yeah. I wish I wrote down all of them but I write down some of them and then it was cool as you can look back and say whoa God God gave me that promise yeah. God fulfilled it. But yeah, vision, we would say, right? Joel, the prophecy from Joel. Uh, young men dream dreams, visions. You're, you're, and and that, that happens often. In fact, many of you in this room have told me about a vision God gave you, right? You're, you're, so that, that's, that's a cool thing. And I think it falls into the prophetic, uh, right? So. A question would you would you say that um, usually scripture will confirm a lot of times for you what your vision was or what your dream was because a couple of times I've had a dream I was 
I, I'll actually share this because it's pretty amazing what the Lord does. Um, about 10 years ago, my husband and I, 2008 crash, and um, I had been to dinner with another Christian couple, and he had said something to the gentleman that we were sitting with um, that he didn't tell me, and I was so offended. I was like, you, that, you know, you told, because we were just going through a really hard time, and I was leaving the next day for ministry school in, in Arizona, and my pastor had selected like five people to go, and my girlfriend, who I was sitting with, had given me a book to read while I was on the trip, and so he and I went to bed that night, and we were back to back, and just mad. I was so mad at him. I'm like, I'm not talking to you. And I, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, and I said, "Lord, you have to fix. You have to just tell him. Just tell him. Just discipline him." And I was so mad. And the Lord, um, He said, "Will you do what I? I heard in my spirit. Will you do what I tell you to do?" And I was like, "Yes, I'll do anything, Lord. Just get him. Just get him good." I was so mad, and I went back to sleep, and, and I fell into a dream, and the dream was me in my car driving away from my home, and it was down a road that I would go to Bible study, and my two babies, our youngest of five, they were in car seats, and they, they were in the car seats, and I turned, and I saw a church, and I went into the church, and I pulled it, and the kids were gone, and I, and I saw a priest in a robe, and I heard Melchizedek. And I, I had learned that that was Jesus, and I, I, I'm going to follow Jesus into this church. And when I got into the church, the door behind me was gone, and I was in four walls. And I was like, the priest's back was to me, and I was just walled in. And then the priest pushed the wall, and I went into this room where there was a, a beautiful bath. And I found out later it was like a Jewish bath, like that healing bath that Jesus healed the man in. But, and then I was like, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And Jesus came and he hugged me. And I could cry because it was so, the touch of God was so profoundly warm and loving. And my anger, everything was gone. And I went to look at Jesus' face and it was my husband's face. And you know, the Bible says he's the priest of your home. And, and I wasn't respecting my husband. And I was just really, you know, like, oh, I, I got it. Well, I woke up and I'm back to back with him. And I'm like, no, Lord, I want to go back in my dream. I was in this beautiful place with you. And he said, hug your husband. Hug your husband. And I'm like, no, I was being really stubborn. But the second I submitted to the Lord and I hugged him, he was in tears. He says, I've been praying for you since 3 in the morning. Well, fast forward, I go to the trip, and I have this book, and I'm on the plane, and I go to open the book, and it's Hosea, chapter 3, I think. I will wall her in on all four sides. I will stop her with thorns and thistles, and it was Jesus, when he, and the crown of thorns came to my mind, and I was like, Jesus, you stop me in my anger, so I just, I think that there's sometimes, maybe not always, but scripture will come, confirmation will come, and you'll understand that we're always trying to, like, fix our husbands, fix ourselves. But it's Jesus who's going to really just his word, yeah. really his word, too. And part of that, it sounds like to me, I mean, that was a, a sanctification moment, which I said earlier, right? We should always be letting the Holy Spirit sanctify us and say, okay, I actually want you to think about the situation this way. I'm going to give the 22nd version. Can I tell the story about the dream, what they're used to grabbing this, this steering wheel, right? So... I was, this was their second house, talking about their real estate. Yeah. And I didn't have the money, again. Yeah. And, but I felt like, well, I'm just going to offer this for something ridiculous. And, um, and she's like, no, no. And I'm like, well, I really feel. <laughs> I kept telling her. And so, like, I really feel. So she has this dream. Was it three, three in a row? Yeah. Uh, she fall, she would fall asleep. I think it's funny, so sorry. I should let her. But she grabs the steering wheel from me. I'm driving. Yeah. And she turns and wrecks the car. So she wakes up. And I'm, just have, I'm just having a good sleep, Dennis. <laughs> and she's like, I won't wreck the car. You're in charge. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, here's the crazy part. Two people confirmed it yeah. that same weekend. Two people in our church said, I see you buying a house with big yeah. uh, ceiling. Yeah. 
Now, long story short, it, be, it was it can, it rental property, and it was another word that Will actually confirmed just last year. I was about to sell it, and I said, hey, can you just pray with me about something? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, you need to believe for the amount. And I was like, yeah, but in my head, the realtor said, no, you will not get more than 110. Yeah. No way. Yeah. And he said, well, you need to wait for the amount. And I, and it was, I received his word. I waited six months and put it up for the amount, the 120, and it sold for the 125. And I waited. I waited. Yeah. And so it was the same, it was the same place yeah. that she had a dream about, yeah. which allowed the, the mission to keep going forward. Yeah. Right? And so, anyways, wild. Please, yeah. Please. Something real quick about dreams. Um, uh, when I was like 14, my pastor recognized that I had the prophetic on me. And so he invited me out to, to every Saturday. We had a church. The church was like 3,000 or something like that at the time. So, so every Saturday, we believed. We realized that, oh, God's speaking to us in dreams. dreams. So, so the pastor actually became real proactive. said, if you have a dream that stayed with you, that you feel is a God dream, come share it. So about 600 people would come every Saturday like one by one, and we're in the room, and I'm like, I'm being mentored. I'm like, whoa, you know, and, and there were just all these incredible vivid dreams, and that's when I got, I got introduced to this. This is an incredible avenue. God, sometimes in that picture, will say so many things in this short dream. Isn't it powerful? How it, so he likes to do that, and, and the other thing, too, is you're, you're out, so you won't interrupt with the the messaging. So he puts you out, and I mean, you know, but be careful about being absolutist about the meanings of things. For example, even the idea that there has to be a scripture, because sometimes, sometimes sell, don't sell. There's no Bible scripture that says, thus says the Lord sell, you know, because sometimes there is no scripture or support for a, for a message in a dream. Um, and, and also, I, I am really have a problem with this means this. This, be careful about indices of dream interpretation. In the realm of the spirit, in the world, maybe you can. In the realm of the spirit, that is too confining. If you, because everything means different. For example, you a, a picture, a dream of a dog and you smell perfume is different than a picture of a dog and you're like, ew. A picture of a dog and you're afraid is different than a picture of the same dog and you're scared. Different meanings. So if you're going to index what dreams mean, it's going to be a big book because all the emotions mean differently. The same picture, different emotion. You can have three different, same dream and you're afraid. Same dream, you're scared. God is saying something completely different in those scenarios. So, so don't be absolutist that dogs always mean immorality. No, a dog could mean comfort. Right? A dog could mean fascination. If a dog could mean protection, because God dog, depending on the size of the dog. So, so let, we can't be absolutists. Let's, let's sit with, and, and the, the, back to the other point, when, if you can't get the meaning, don't go, don't fix, don't go crazy. You can sit, it's okay to sit with something and, and, and wait. Lord, unfold this, unpack this for me. Share it with, an, again, an authority. Just say, I've had this dream. And if, if the meaning doesn't come, don't f- try to force meanings. Don't try to, to, to just let it, let, and, and a, dream, a very intricate dream could just be saying something as simple as, I am with you. And here you are. No, what does this feather mean? And there was a feather. And there was another hat. Oh, and it was sun. No, the Lord just saying, in the whole dream, he's saying, son, don't worry. That's all he's saying. So, so because, again, the language of the spirit is not human. Can we just get with that? It would be so much safer with, 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 from all error if, if we can just know that this is God. He's communicating with me. And he speaks God. God speaks God. Amen. So I wanted to, I told him, um, as we close with the exercise, I also want to just like total liberty. If you, what, if you want to prophesy to anyone, go for it. And, uh, but we're going to do this. Once you stand up to your feet and we're just going to take three minutes. And again, there's, uh, I told Dennis for the whole weekend, whether it's tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, Monday night, or right now, if he decides to prophesy to people, that's, he has the uh, absolute per, uh, liberty to do that. 
And, uh, but just, I want you to do this. Just close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to just grab your Bible or Bible app on your phone and just ask the Lord. This is something Will did about, I don't know, a number of months ago. And to tell you how cool this is as you're praying, I went up to someone and the, when the person I walked to gave me the exact verse that I wrote down for the year, my verse for the year. And it was crazy cool. And so, like he said, it may surprise you, but it also may comfort you. Or So just, just ask the Lord, say, Holy Spirit, what, what verse um, do you want to take me to? And uh, don't pick out a person yet. Just ask the Lord for a verse. <laughs> 